What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we're back with a final wrap-up of AEW Unmatched Collection Series number 4. And I know that typically we only do 2 in 1, but I am going to throw this Corazon de Leon Chris Jericho Luminaries Collection in here because it is going to be a 3 in 1. You know, I, I don't plan to be here forever and ever. We've already seen multiple Chris Jerichos. I don't think a, a ton of people are really looking forward to this figure. I'm still going to give it the MDT treatment. We're still going to dive into the figure, but I feel like not a lot of people really are focused too heavily on this figure and then this is like our fourth or fifth mjf figure though it could be the best one i don't think a ton of people are looking forward to this one but i feel like a whole lot of people want to see the jade cargo figure including me so i figured throw them all three together we'll see what comes of it a lot of them don't really have a lot of accessories either so it should be a really simple and effective review but i am excited to get into it i'm looking forward to all three of these in the sense of cracking them all out seeing what they got going on i will be honest with you jade's figure is the one that i'm most looking forward to out of these three but you guys know how I feel about white gear. This MJF figure is very interesting to me. And Chris Jericho is one of my goats. So I'm excited to see what we got over here. Find out, is it, is it as bad as people are thinking it is? We're going to get into all the details here, of course. If you guys would like to grab these figures, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. If you missed our reviews of CM Punk, Adam Page, and Cody from the series, definitely go check that out. And we are going to be ranking this set very soon. So stay tuned for that. So AEW and Match Series 4 has been an absolute banger, man. But let's dive into our packaging first and then we We'll crack them out. First off, we do have MJF. Here's a shot of him in box. Nice little image of him there. No wrist tape on, on the little render image. There he is in his white gear looking good. You got MJF down the side. Number 29. You got MJF over there on the back. You got a nice image of him there. This is from Blood and Guts, of course. And you do have the rest of the figures in the wave, which we've already reviewed. Then the Luminaries Collection is pretty much the same exact packaging, but it does have this Luminaries Collection logo down here. It's got this like pink and purplish border. It's got blue foil for the name right there, Corazon de on Chris Jericho and then you do have the blue foil up top. If you guys didn't know this is way back when he first started his career in Mexico I do believe for Chris Jericho and they decided to commemorate it in figure form. They've never done that before for this look of Jericho so it should be really interesting. There's a shot of him there. Nice little signature. Rest of the figures in the wave. Nice image of Jericho there. And last but not least we have Jade and she's looking pretty immaculate. Wish we had the TBS championship but she's looking good right here. I'm, I'm actually really impressed with this figure. It could be the best women's figure that AEW and Jazz wears has made so far but her name down the side in silver you guys know the idea there there's a shot in there and then you do have her on the back there with see look at that like what is that there's like not, the signature didn't even make it onto the packaging that's insane bro it looks like it says ozio or ozo or something that's insane like yeah I, I told you it looks like a dmv signature it just didn't show up or something but that's insane anyways let's crack all three figures out of the packaging find out what they're all about and then we will cover all their accessories and find out if these figures are worth a damn so here's Corazon de Leon, Jade Cargill, and MJF out of their packaging. Now, I will say my Jade Cargill's arm was, like, almost completely abnormally out of socket. I mean, her arm was looking like Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets. You know what I'm saying? It was it was floppy, man. It was looking pretty dense. The I did fix the arm, but the, the one signature hand is to the fingers a little bit bent there. Not the biggest deal, but here they are at their packaging. Liking what I'm seeing so far, I do have my gripes, of course, which we're going to get into and cover. But since these guys don't have a lot of accessories, what I'm going to do is just throw their accessories all together and break them up so you guys can know exactly what you're getting with each. And then we're going to go one by one through each figure, through each comparison, through each articulation and get it through all that. And then we'll wrap it up all nice and sweet with a great bow. One thing that I'm struggling with internally is how I'm going to rank this set because I have no, like, I, I am very genuinely shocked about this set. Not really shocked, just, I guess uh, I was excited for the wave, but I guess I'm above and beyond how excited I was for the wave. So that is something to talk about with this wave and hopefully we can ride that momentum out. But let's dive into their accessories and then we'll go one by one through each figure itself. So starting off with accessories, let's start off with MJF because he does come with the most by far with the rest of these figures here as far as Jade, MJF, and Chris Jericho go. We do have another scarf here, which is the same scarf we saw with his Series 2 figure. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same. The only thing that kind of bothers me is that they leave off details, man. Like they're, they're missing the red stripes. They're missing like some white blocks, I think, in here. But it's not bad. I'm never going to really complain about a cloth that accessory and this fringe right here is really nicely detailed i think they do a good job on this but just for you know accuracy's sake it is inaccurate i mean i got i gotta call a spade a spade it is inaccurate but it's really nice and it fits the figure well and i think it's nice i mean a bendy wire would be perfection but this is still really nice it holds shape pretty decent so i like this a lot next up we have yet again another aew microphone i i this is the third one in this set that's kind of ridiculous now you do get some interchangeable hands you have his white tape hands here which are just regular grabbing hands or so the right one is the left one is a 
mic holding hand. It's in the white tape. These are the ones he actually wrestled in. Then they give you the dynamite diamond ring hands here where one's like a mic holding hand with the ring on there and then you have a fist with the ring so you can knock somebody out and, you know, cheat to win. So there is MJF's accessories. Now as far as Jade's accessories go, you only get two pairs of interchangeable hands, nothing else. So you do get these fists. We've seen this mold before, nothing new or crazy to it. And then we have these entrance hands, which I swear we've seen before. Maybe not, but my one finger is warped right there, as you guys can see. The whole arm was warped, but it did warp this, this arm over here. I think it's the way she's posed in the package or something, but nothing a little hot, you know, air or hot water and then running under cold water can't fix, but they are pretty cool. It's like these entrance hands right there. Kind of Randy Orton-esque or Mandy Rose-esque right there from Elite Series 75. And last but not least, we have Chris Jericho's rubber jacket, which you guys know. Plug the Matt Cardona clip. Like, oh my god, that goddamn fucking stuck in that pose jacket. Gonna... This is not what we want, you know. Uh, I think it would have been really, I think it would have really sold this figure a lot more. I think it's going to peg warm a lot more because this isn't cloth. I think if you would have made this cloth, I know you do have the very nice CM Punk hoodie in this wave, which could have contributed to this. You also have the MJF scarf. But had this been cloth with fringe and stuff and been really colorful and, and stuff like that and been able to be moved around, I think that it would have done significantly better as far as sales are concerned because people would have wanted that jacket. So that's going to hurt this figure, but it's got the fringe coming down all the different colors. It is a softer jacksy material, but at the same time, it's just not what we want, man. It's just a black jacket with some gold going on. Nothing crazy or anything, but yeah, the rubber jacket's just, uh, I don't know, man. I'm just not a fan of them, man. I think they're they're kind of garb. So starting off with MJF, man, doesn't look like him, bro. Doesn't look like him at the slightest, in my opinion. I just don't, uh, I think it's the eye shape or something like that. I don't think it's just, you know, just despicably not MJF, but it just doesn't have that likeness, I don't think. it. Again, it reminds me of like a Jack C or an FTC, you know, fig whatever that's called. I just don't see it. I'm just, I'm just not a fan of it. Don't like it, not good. Anyways, you do have some nice texturing here on the beard, which I like, and I think at certain angles it can favor MJF. I think the haircut and the beard and stuff, but just overall, doesn't look like MJF. Nice looking torso right here. He does have his tattoo on the ribs. You've got the beautiful white elbow pad with the MJF logo with the scarf pattern inside the logo, which is perfect, I think, and it actually includes the white blocks and the red lines, like I was talking about on the scarf. How nice is that? Also, you do have his line tattoo over here. Hate that the peg kind of messes it up, but not a huge deal. You got the white hand tape, the beautiful looking trunks in the white with the gold and purple right there. I'm going to have to buy a bunch of these, man, because that looks sick as hell. I love the way that looks. That's very clean. The MJF on the back is very clean. Can't wait to get Wardlow to match this. Even though I am a big Wardlow guy, I'd really like to see that figure. Can't wait to get that in hand. But you got the white knee tape, white knee pads as well, and then you do have the black boots to tie it all together. This is definitely the most toyetic or best looking MJF, man. I just think that that is, uh, I don't think that's really disputable, to be honest with you. You know, I really don't. I think that, you know, you get good ab crunch in there. Head sculpt can look all the way down, can look up decently there. We've seen multiple MJF, so it's not like crazy on articulation, but it's not a bad, like it moves around perfectly. I don't think you're going to, you know, have any trouble getting him into any poses that you want, but this MJF, I like a lot, man. I think it's pretty damn, pretty damn fire right there, but let's get into it. It's some MJF AEW figure comparison. So for your MJF figure comparisons, you do have the MJF Unrivaled Series 2, you have the MJF Unrivaled Series 6, the AEW Unmatched Series 2, and then the AEW Unmatched Series 4. I think the Unmatched Series 4 is collectively the best. I don't think it's the best head sculpt. I think that one goes to the MJF Unrivaled Series 2. This one's decent, and this one's kind of decent as well. I think this one looks the best. This one has the best skin tone, and this one has the next best skin tone. These are kind of gray looking, but they all kind of vary. They're not all the same. I really like this skin tone. I hope they continue with this skin tone right here, and I don't think a head swap's going to look very good because the skin tones are so different, but uh, you know, it is what it is. We can always get a different head sculpt in there, but these are these are nice MJFs. You also have the Chase variant with the Unrivaled Series 2, which is probably the probably the next best one. It may even be the best one, but I really like the white gear for MJF. I'm just not big on the head sculpt. It's also wild because the tattoo has changed every time. If you guys look, it's literally colored and sized differently every time. So hopefully they will get that under control as well. Because I don't think that really helps anybody if it's just changing every single time and, you know, all over the place. So that really needs to get fixed. But there's MJF up next to the rest of our MJF figure collections. And then for one more comparison, here's the new MJF up next to Wardlow. So Wardlow can kick his ass again. Now getting into Jade's figure, man, really like this head sculpt. I think it definitely shows favoritism to her. I think that it's a pretty decent head sculpt here. I like the hair color and stuff like that. I think it looks really good. I can't wait to see what the next iteration of her will look like. You know, uh, we don't have any in the works right now, but I am excited to see a future one of her. I would have liked to seen her in the, as the chase figure, maybe with a TBS title or a more bright, you know, colorful gear. Even though the black and gold's not 
not bad. I still like this head sculpt a lot. I think it looks just like her. I love the musculature and the definition in this figure. I mean, like, look at her stomach. It looks incredible. Do not like the, the, the cut right there. I've talked about this multiple times. I just think that they could do this the same as the men's, man, where you make this a crotch piece that's even angled. Even make it angled. That's okay. Then make the, t the lower torso a separate piece that goes down in there so you get that better ab crunch when you bend over instead of just the top part. The arms could be a bit bigger as well. I think that would have made this figure look a little bit better. Like the shoulder to arms, like her delts and shoulders are big, man. They're, they're big. She's, she's very muscular. She has a ridiculous physique, and I think that the figure should implement that. I think her legs and her stomach look fine, and her shoulders up top, the collarbone area looks fine. It's the shoulders right here and the arms that I think are too small, but I do like the way the gear looks. You got the black and gold, like diamond plates pieces in there. Looks pretty good. Double jointed arms. Looking pretty nice. You got her gigantic thighs right here. They look really good as far as the muscle tone. I like the knee pads, the gold boots. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this mold. You know, they're kind of wacky and like they're kind of loose there for my liking, but they're not terrible. You know, it is what it is. They look accurate. You got the jade logos, open knee pads, like I said, but what a what a really badass figure. I really enjoy it. I am a big jade fan, so I do like this. She can look down a lot. Her, you know, she can't look up because of her long hair, of course, but arms are, are fully articulated. They feel good. I feel like you could put on some five-star classics with this figure. Ab crunch is not the best because of, of course, the cut right there. It doesn't have the same function as a men's figure, which is pretty upsetting, but you see, even like pushing it back together, you still get that pretty deep like cut right there, which I do not like. Can't kick forward the best. I think it's just because of the size of the, you know, the upper thighs right there and the way that the, you know, the crotch piece is shaped, but split's pretty decent. You do get a thigh swivel. You get a great double jointed knee. You do get boots swivel. The ankles move up and down and you have a good ankle rocker in there. I just think the figure feels a bit stiff, you know, like her legs can only go together that much. They can't go any more together and like when you push it together, she gets that weird leg bend because of the thighs right there, but really awesome figure. I actually do enjoy it quite a bit, but I am a big Jade fan, so I mean that may come across there, you know, but uh, I like it. I think aesthetically it's nice, but I think we can improve this figure. I think it's definitely improvable, but uh, that's just what I'm thinking right now. But there is Jade. Let's get into some figure comparisons. So for your first Jade comparison, here is the RSC Blood and Guts Britt Baker and the Unmatched Series 2 Take Conti figures. I think they look pretty good, even though the Take Conti doesn't want to stand up. I think, you know, they're, you know, just slowly but surely. It's like every wave, the women's figure gets, figures get better. I thought that the Take Conti was the best women's figure. Then we got, what, Anna J, and then we got... Thunder Rosa, and then we got so and so and so and so and so and so. So it just keeps getting better and better. I think that Jade could be the best women's figure so far. I think the Thunder Rosa kind of took that, you know, from her. But, you know, getting Thunder Rosa in here, I think I like the Jade figure better, but it could be just because I'm a bigger fan of her. But I think all these scale well. Jade's a pretty big woman, so I think this works out cool and everything like that. Kind of your modern day China a little bit. So that's pretty dope. I, I, I like this a lot right here. But not only do we have some AEW figure comparisons, we have WWE figure comparisons. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This Jade towers over Sasha and Bianca. Bianca Belair is 5'7", and Jay Cargill is 5'10". I do not think that this is accurate. I think that this looks like a huge difference. You know what I mean? I, I think that this is a pretty gigantic gap between these two. That is absurd. That's way too big. Jesus. That is ridiculous, man. That's crazy. That's way too big, man. I, I Yeah, we gotta, we gotta size that down. The next Jade needs to be significantly smaller. The head needs to be be smaller portions need to be better just no doubt no doubt hold up where's a men's figure bro like give me give me ward love like i guess that scales fine but jesus compared to the women's figures of wwe this jade cargo will beat the shish out of them so gonna get a chris jericho corazon de leon not my favorite head sculpt i just don't see chris jericho in here maybe a tad of likeness again very jacksy looking i just don't think we're gonna look back on this head sculpt and be like damn it was good for the time hell no just not a good head honestly the 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 wavy hair is okay. It looks like back then it kind of was like crimped or that it had like a waviness or a curliness to it. And it's kind of completely straight right here. He looks like an 80s rocker or something. Like he looks like Val Hallen, if you know what I'm saying. And yes, I meant Val Hallen, not Van Halen, Val Hallen. Go down to the torso. They did use like the regular like MJF style torso right here. He's just got black wrist tape on there. You got your yellow trunks. It does have a nice lion logo over here. You got some nice gold fringe going down. It says lion right there. This is very odd how they 
sculpted this onto the thigh, so when you rotate it, it's like out of line, which is very odd. Like, I guess it's not horrific, but I think they could have done better without even adding that or making that, make that claw, something. I, I just think that would have done a lot better, but I do like this mold right here for the, for the upper thigh and how they have that thigh cut in there. I think a lot of people could use this for biker short, you know, customs and stuff like that. You could easily, you know, pop these thighs out, put some other thighs in here and make like a custom character. You do have black knee pads, black kick pad. He does have the boot rotation. It says lion. This does look to be like a new kick pad mold. At least it, it feels like it and seems like it, but we shall see about that. As far as his articulation is concerned, he can look down pretty decent. Can't look up because of the long hair. Good ab crunch in there because AEW is undefeated. Do have the nice shoulders in there. Good split seat, upper thigh cut, double jointed knee. He does have kicker pad rotation. Ankles move down and up. Beautiful ankle pivot. And uh, yeah, he can kick forward pretty decently. Yeah, I mean, the figure moves around pretty good. That double joint doesn't really work that well, I'll, I'll add. Yeah, the double joint doesn't work that good. It could just be the knee pads or, or something like that. But I don't know. Like, it, it doesn't move around terrible. Kind of worried about the ankles getting loose. But this Corazon de Leon is a cool concept, just uh, not my favorite. Now, for your AEW figure comparisons for your Chris Jericho, you have all the rest of the Chris Jerichos we've seen as far as mainline release outside of the little bit of the bubbly ringside exclusive. But from left to right, you do have the AEW Unrivaled Series 1B Jericho, the Shop AEW 1 of 3000 exclusive, the AEW Unrivaled 1A, the Amazon exclusive, the AEW Unrivaled Series 6, and the AEW Unrivaled Series 8. So tons of Chris Jericho to go around. I'm so sick of seeing this yelling head sculpt. I mean, good God. It's either pissed off or he's yelling. They never reused a little bit of the bubbly head sculpt. I don't know if that's just because that factory that made that first one, you know, it wasn't able to be replicated. But we definitely need a new head sculpt. We need a new Jericho. All these are virtually the same. Would like to see something different. Not to mention all the chase figures and exclusives. We have seen quite a bit there. But what do you think of Corazon de Leon? But I think that pretty much wraps up our three in one review today on AEW on Match Series 4. Corazon de Leon, Chris Jericho, Jake Cargill, and MJF. Had a lot of fun with the review, man. I think that all three are pretty good in their own right. I'm not the biggest fan of the Chris Jericho head sculpt. I felt like they could have done a much better job on that. Maybe I could get, you know, uh, Chris Jericho basic or something and kind of pop the head on there. Maybe play around with that. Try to get that exact look of that young Jericho. Or maybe we'll get a young Jericho in the future from either Mattel or Jazzwares that we could pop on there and make that look a little bit better. I do not like MJF's head sculpt either. I think there was much better options. I don't think it looks anything like MJF. It kind of looks like an FTC head sculpt. You guys know the Figures Toy Company or whatever that was that did the Kevin Steen and stuff like that. Like, it's it's a generalized, like, computer-generated sort of head sculpt for an MJF. Like, it looks like somebody kind of, uh, you know, just kind of sculpted it off a whim. It doesn't look like true effects or it doesn't look like it completely embodies it. With that being said about those head sculpts, I think Jade's head sculpt is perfect. I think it looks just like her. I think the hair color's perfect. I think the likeness is there. I can't wait to see what her future figures look like. My biggest problem with Jade is going to be her articulation. Really wish she could move around a lot better. I also don't like that the uh, the belly, you know, the cut in the middle of the stomach. A lot of AEW figures are like that, you know, so I don't like to deduct too much points. I think it's an eyesore, but I would like to see them experiment with the same way they do the men's figures, how the bottom part of the torso sits down into the crotch. I think they can play around with that. Even if the crotch has to angle down, you could make that midsection piece a piece that also folds in just like the men's. I think that's something they could work towards. Hopefully that'll be the case. I think the definition on the figure and the musculature of the jade is really, really nice. It's a really aesthetically great figure. I'm not big on the boots either. I think they look great. They just don't move very well. The MJF gear is off the charts. I think it looks insane. I love the MJF from the neck down. I think it's the best MJF from the neck down. It's not my favorite head. I am going to play with some head options, see what that looks like, but I really enjoy the jade. I really enjoy the MJF. I think the Chris Jericho tassels on the leg are very crazy as well. Not my favorite figure there, but I think it's going to be great for fodder pieces. I think it's going to be great for looking like other characters making creative superstars and, and things of that nature. And if you're a Chris Jericho guy, I would get it, man. I think it's a really, a really cool and unique idea and figure and to bring that figure to fruition. I just don't know how well it's going to sell. I see it rotting on shelves. You know, I think it's going to be the easy, biggest shelf warmer in the set, unfortunately. And that, that kind of sucks, you know, because uh, I, I feel like AEW figures 
shelf warm as a whole anyway, just because they've had to pump so many out. I think that the long delay in between sets kind of called for them ordering more, you know, stores ordering more, and then they lead to them sitting on the pegs and warming and stuff like that. But as you guys just saw with the recent Target deal with the $10 per unrivaled figure and things of that nature, but I really enjoyed these figures. I am enjoying posing them around, pairing these three with CM Punk, Cody, and Adam Page is has been really awesome, and I've enjoyed myself thoroughly. You guys have even let me know in the comment section below that you think that I've been giddy about the reviews, and it's totally true. I, I'm enjoying myself a whole lot, and that is what it's all about, man, but that is where our shout-out's gonna go to today. Under Hive Mind, he says, great review as always, Brad. Hearing how much fun you were having swapping all those Adam Page parts around perfectly captured the joy of figure collecting as an adult. Very relatable, and yeah, man, it, it really was. If you guys missed our Cody and Adam Page review, definitely go check it out. I, it was just too much fun. We were switching bodies and heads and parts, and it was it was just so much fun, and that's really what it's all about, man. These figures are really allowing for that interchangeability, and I think if you were to bring that to the women's figures, I think that that would add a whole bunch as well. Even if you have to connect the butt cheeks to it, I know that a lot of the times the, the cheeks are hanging out of the bottom of the shorts. If they would just connect the cheeks to the crotch piece and then have your lower torso part that sits down in there it would allow for an amazing ab crunch and i think that would do wonders for the figures but a huge shout out to under Hideline for the comment man thank you guys so very much for watching hope you guys did enjoy check out the rest of unmatched series 4 before we rank the set and i will uh see you guys tomorrow for that video we're gonna do a my damn thoughts video we're gonna break the full set down the best parts the worst parts rank the set which is going to be very challenging for me but we'll get into all that man but i'm getting out of here thank you for watching subscribe to the channel see you guys next time have a blessed day and of course you guys know what not to do you cross the line